Hey guys, it's Phoenix Automotive here again. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Infiniti Q50, Q60 from years 2014 and up. We've seen it go all the way up to 2019. We're still seeing the 2020 if it's compatible yet. But this is the Mark III unit, the third generation of our unit. This is a 13.6 inch screen. And you can see here we have AC buttons here. These also light up as well. And you have the home, hazard button, climate control, audio, and a favorite button that you can program to do whatever you want for this button. This is the Mark III Q50. It is an Android 9 unit and it has built-in wireless CarPlay, which means uh, when you hook up your phone to the USB, you can do it wirelessly and do CarPlay wirelessly. So this is the Mark III Q50 Q60, 2014 and above, 13.6 inch. And this is a quick video on how to do the install. So in the back of the unit, really quick, this is the processor. You can see we also have an HDMI port and this HDMI port is an output. What it's gonna output is just, it's gonna mirror what's on our screen. So if you wanna hook up an external monitor, it'll show whatever is on this screen. It's not gonna be whatever video you're playing, it'll show the whole screen and the video. We are working on it where you can, uh, it's more seamless, but these are the connections to the back. You have a Wi-Fi antenna here that we already screwed on. You have the factory RCA jack for the factory backup camera to retain. If you have a 360 camera on your Q50 or Q60, that is also retained, it hook up through here. You have the GPS antenna. So in the box, you'll get a GPS antenna that you connect to here. And this GPS antenna, we route anywhere inside the car or out of the car, as long as you have green bars on that GPS monitor area. We'll show you that later in another video when we have the unit on and checking the settings. You have this connector right here. Now this will be your factory connector from the car. In most vehicles, it's gonna be a green plug. If you have trouble plugging this in, it should fit in. You just maybe gotta wiggle it in a little bit or maybe some plastic is uh, blocking it. Try to maybe trim it and plug it in through here. You have other plugs right here. You're not gonna be using all of them. Just to show you the ones you're gonna be using, you get a bunch of harnesses. You get three sets of harnesses, one here, another one here, and here. These are the ones we're gonna be giving you that connects to the back of the unit. You can see we have a yellow, a white, a blue, and a purple. So first thing to connect, I would say, is the audio. This connection has a groove at the bottom and a cut at the left side of it. Gotta match that up, and that goes right here. The other one is a white connector. Now this white connector is not needed. You can see it's two RCAs, one orange, one yellow, and they're labeled a front video and this one is labeled side video. So these are, if you wanna put aftermarket uh, cameras, you can always put them through here, and then you have to open an app on the unit to look at the video feeds there. You have a uh, orange, red, and gray wire. Now I would take a multimeter and check what voltage is coming out, or if you put 12 volts to it, what would happen? But these are either trigger wires or power wires you can use for these cameras right here. And it's a white connector. There is a cut on the right side and a groove on the left side, and that one would go right there. So again, this one is not necessary. The yellow one is mandatory. The other one we have is a blue connector, has two grooves on the bottom and a groove on the left side of it. And these RCAs, you can see, we have one is a 3.5 jack. Now this 3.5 jack is for a microphone if you wanna put an external microphone. The unit itself has its own external microphone somewhere here. And you, I suggest using the built-in microphone. If you wanna use an external, you can plug up your own, or you can use the one we provide here where you would route this microphone somewhere in your vehicle for use. So this is the external microphone we use, and this is the uh, port that you can plug it in. The other RCAs are labeled uh, white, yellow, and red. Well, the white one is, uh, white and red is for left and right audio, and the yellow one is for video. So if you wanna put a video signal in along with audio, you would do that, and then on the unit itself, you would go into the AUX app, and that's where you can see the video feed as well as hear the sound coming from these ports. And this blue connector, two grooves on the bottom, a groove on the left, or on the left, and then that goes right there. So you can see these three bottom ones are not used. This last one we do use, it's for the small speaker. This purple connector goes right here, and it's a two-prong connector where you connect this small speaker. Now this small speaker, you connect like so. After you connect the small speaker, what this small speaker is for is a third-party navigation sounds. So you need a Google Maps to say, turn left, turn right. This is the speaker you would be using. So if we connect this right here, 
And then this small speaker has an adhesive on the back that you can put inside the car. As long as you can hear it, then it's good to go. I would do testing, uh, just play, play Google Maps or something and see if the sound comes out from here before you fully install the unit. So let's disconnect this. We've gone through the small speaker. We've gone, again, the white one's not necessary. The blue one is not necessary as well. The last one we have is a USB connector. And this USB connector is two grooves on the bottom and a groove on the right, and that goes right there. Now this, so the two mandatory connectors are this brown one and this yellow one. Uh, if you could check, so that's the position of these two. Just make sure you have it in the right spot. If you don't, it's not gonna work. And there's two USB ports on here. One of them has a label called OTG. The OTG one is your built-in CarPlay or built-in wireless CarPlay. We have a video on how to hook the wireless CarPlay up as well as built-in, so check that video out. And you need to have access to these USB ports. So I would recommend putting them either in your glove compartment, some people put it in the uh, shifter area, as long as you can fit it somewhere where it's accessible, uh, not inside the car. So it's a pretty long wire that you can route outside to the vehicle. So you've had the USB plugged in, you have this plugged in. This yellow plug is for your sound, say Spotify or YouTube. And you have this connection at the way end of it. It's a gray wire. It has a T-harness. This is a T-harness connection. And this goes near your, um, that armrest area where you pull up. Right in front of that, if you remove the trim pieces, should be a connector. Now, uh, we have messed up in the past. There are two places where you could connect this. There's one in the front and then one right behind it. Choose the one that's right behind it. The one in front is for the uh, switching modes of the vehicle driving mode, like eco or sport or normal. The one right behind that is this connector. It, they're identical connections. Use the one right behind it. And make that T-harness there. If, if you have this connected to the wrong spot, it's not going to give you proper sound. So make sure there's two places where you can connect this. Try one or the other, but the one you're supposed to connect to is the one closest to the armrest farthest away from the, closest to the armrest. So you made this T-harness connection, this wire we route uh, towards from the back of the unit and through the uh, shifter area. So just gotta hide this wire. That's one connection done, the USB connection done. The next one we have, if we look over here, there's a couple main harness connectors. Now these two connectors, you're only gonna use one or the other. This is for your steering wheel control functions. If you don't want steering wheel control functions, you don't need to go in your steering wheel column and open that up if you don't wanna go through that hassle. We've seen that this white connector is used mainly for anything 2018 and above. If yours is 2018 or lower, if yours is lower than 2018, use the gray one. And so where this goes is uh, on your steering wheel column, open that steering wheel column up and below it, there's a connector that either looks like this or like this, put it between it. And this white or off white connector, this would go, so say we have a 2017 Q50, we're gonna be using the gray one. We're gonna put this inside the steering wheel column and this white off white connector would go straight to this one right here. So we make this connection right there. Once you've made that connection, you can see it's a pretty long wire, and this wire goes from the steering wheel column, and this portion right here goes to the top of the screen. So if we go over here, you can see we have a factory Q50 screen right here, and this is the eight inch screen. This eight inch screen is you're gonna have at the top of the, at the, top of the vehicle, you're still gonna leave this screen inside, and our, our unit is gonna go over on top of that screen. And you can see it plugs in right here, and you plug in the factory one, which is this connector, straight back into our connector, like so. So make this T-harness connection. This wire right here goes to the steering wheel column, and you have one more connector. This one connector goes to the back of the unit, which goes right here. I can show you here. There you go. So leave the top screen connected. The other, the top screen has two, the top screen has two connectors, one here and one here. This big connector is your factory backup camera. We grab the video feed from that video, from this top screen, connect this to the factory again, and this RCA male goes straight into this female on the back. So whether you have factory backup camera or a 360 camera, the video feed will go through to here. 
Last connection you gotta make sure is again this factory connector. And for most vehicles it's gonna be green, others might be purple or gray. So we've gone through the GPS antenna, the external microphone, the steering wheel controls. If you have 2018 or above, use this one. Right now we're using the 17 and below, which is this gray one. Screw on the Wi-Fi antenna, plug in the GPS, and make sure you make that T-harness connection that is near your shifter. So you gotta go back on that shifter towards the armrest area. Again, there's two places where you can put this. So make sure you put it the one to the one nearest the armrest area. And these three connectors, again, we had mentioned before that this connector goes into here. These two connectors are gonna be coming from your factory vehicle. So you're gonna unplug those from the factory and go straight into here. Pretty straightforward with the install. Uh, I have some seen some mess ups. The only mess up maybe would be using this and connecting it straight into here. After they connect it straight into here, it's like a longer piece. You do not do this. This is a steering wheel control column connection. Same with this gray one. These two are steering wheel control columns. They only go in the steering wheel control column. You can see we have the connection main, two main connectors. And again, this one goes straight to there. So that's how to connect the Mark III Q50. I forgot to mention, we also do provide two gray little things, side things. What these do is, uh, depending if you're in Europe or in America, you're a right-hand drive or left-hand drive, these are those two pieces. It's actually in one, so you gotta break this apart at the uh, break-off points. And you either, you remove these two, depending on left and right-hand drive. So there are screws here, here, and here, four screws for you to remove. That way you can remove this gray part and switch them out for the left or right hand drive. And they go right here and they go right there. So with the new iteration of the Mark III, a couple things we've improved on is you no longer need to take out the factory CD player on the Q50 or Q60. You used to have to take out the factory CD player and put in our own uh, proprietary brackets so that the CD player could sit back more. But with the Mark III, all you need to do is take out the front panel, which has the uh, front screen and leave the top screen at the top of the car. And no longer need to remove the CD player to reposition it. If you have the Mark II or Mark I, you do still need to use those brackets. So if you didn't get those brackets, let us know and we can be sure to send that out to you. Just let us know your order number or your name on the order. So the Q50 Mark III is a much easier install. You just need to take out that front panel. That's how to connect the Mark III Q50 and Q60 2014 and above. We've seen all the way up to 2019. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you have any other questions, give us a call at 323-917-9038. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.